This is the Mac Mini, one of the most iconic computers from Apple, which was designed to have a small compact form factor and also a affordable price so that we could get in Apple ecosystem without breaking the bank. This one costs $599 and it is the best smallest computer at the moment of the recording. Actually, in some tasks, forget about brands, forget about size, forget about everything. It is simply the best CPU that we can have at this moment for certain tasks. But although it costs $599, if we fully upgrade one of these, we can easily ramp up to $4,700 US dollars without any sweat. So it's really easy to spend money on these devices. And on the following videos, I will share with you my opinion regarding the upgrades that we should do and the upgrades that we completely should avoid. My Mac Studio with the M1 Max has less performance in certain tasks than the base model M4 Mini. And one of the questions that you might have is, is it worth it to upgrade from a M1 Max to a M4 Base or M4 Pro? And the answer depends on the tasks and the tools that we use. If that's something that you are curious to discover, stay tuned to the channel. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a thumbs up right over there, which is really appreciated on this side of the screen. But in my opinion, if there was a great time to get in the Apple ecosystem or to upgrade to a Mac Mini, this is one of those times. There have been Macs that were great for the time that they were designed and this is definitely one of them and I believe that Probably it's one of the most exciting since the Mac Mini exists. So in the next few videos, I'll be sharing with you if we should upgrade to the M4, M4 Pro, which upgrades should we do and which upgrades should we avoid. But for now, let me share with you my personal experience with the Mac Mini and also a little bit of history for those that are here for the first time and those that don't know the Mac Mini at all. And if you are watching this video on your Windows 10 or 11 computer and you still haven't activated and can't even even edit your desktop icons. Don't forget to check out cdksales.com where we can find budget official OEM keys at an affordable price and with the coupon code that you can see on screen and down below on the video description it will get even cheaper. Now for me it started back in 2012 with an i7 CPU which was awesome. A quad core mini which was my first Mac. Actually I got in the Apple ecosystem back in 2012 with that mini and I never left the PC world with Windows and Linux. That aside, back in 2012 it was an awesome machine and then in 2014, just two weeks before the presentation, I thought okay I'm going to upgrade. So I just sold my Mac Mini which had this form factor, the i7 from 2012, expecting to get a 2014 model which would be awesome. But it was a complete failure. It was a Flop. they released the 2014 version with dual core CPUs only, which was a downgrade, especially for those that use tools with multi tasking. So it was a bit of a headache and I did spend a few months looking for a 2012 second hand unit which I did purchase and it stayed with me until 2018. And over this period it was really bad for Mac mini users. Actually for someone that wanted Mac OS in a form factor without a display, without a keyboard, then it was really bad because if we wanted more power, if we wanted more GPU power, we had to go to the iMac or to the MacBook Pro and on most case scenarios that wasn't worth it. So there was a lot of people that left Mac OS. Some of them used Hackintosh for years. I did test out as well. I did share a lot of videos in the past about Hackintosh, but I did realize that in terms of stability, it was not great for a work environment. As a hobby, it's great, it's awesome, but not to work. Now, Mac Mini 2018, I did select the i5, which was a really awesome machine. There were three options, i3, i5 and i7. I did believe that the i5 was the best in terms of the price for the performance. It also had cooler temperatures and it didn't make as much noise as the i7. Now, I did upgrade my Mac Mini to 32 gigs of RAM. 
I did share all that experience with you. I did use external storage as my main drives. I still do and I will be sharing with you soon enough how I use these days still external storage on any of my machines so that when I do sell one of these I will not lose the value for the storage that I've invested. I will just lose the money for the computer itself. Now that 2018 computer lasted me until the Mac Studio with the M1 Max came out back in 2022 which was awesome a great machine but let me tell you that if the Mac Mini was released before the Mac Studio I would have selected the Mac Mini with the M1 Pro which would be enough for the tasks that I do on the Mac OS system. Let's not forget that I'm also a Windows user, so I do have PCs with really nice CPUs and also really nice GPUs. Be used. So for macOS, the M1 Pro would be enough and that would have saved me here where I live 1000 years. But it didn't, so I got the Mac Studio and I don't regret at all. Then in 2023, they released the updated version with the M2 and M2 Pro. And 2024, here we are with the M4 and M4 Pro on this really cool redesigned form factor. So as you can see, my relationship with Mac Minis is awesome. I do believe that it's a awesome machine and probably the best Mac Mini, which is obviously in terms of performance, but it did have a boost in terms of performance, which is just awesome. And I want to do some testings and share them with you. Real life testings, not only benchmarks. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. And if you did so, don't forget the usual thumbs up right over there, which is really appreciated on this side of the screen. My name is Roberto George, and as always, I'll see you on the next one.